Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Again, I am Akeem, this is my wife Missy. And in this video, we're gonna give you a full breakdown on every dollar that we spent in our home building process. As I alluded to in the other video, which you can watch, I'll put it somewhere up here, but in our empty house uh, tour, I know that a lot of you are going through, you know, the home building process and it varies from builder to builder, you know, what options or upgrades you're going to choose or why you should do it. So in this video, again, we're going to break it all the way down, very in depth on what we spent, how much we spent and why we spent it. So to get it started, I have broken it down into, um, I guess you say like two or three different categories. So I have, you know, there are structural options. And then a lot of our interior, interior designs, interior options, um, and then like some electrical things as well. So to get started, let's start with the structural. So we both wanted a super modern um, home, and the elevation, um, if you're not familiar, is the exterior part of your home that changes the look. So in new construction, you can pick your floor plan. And it's going to be the same for the most part on the inside, but the exterior, the front facing part of the house um, can be completely different with the inside being the same. So that's called your elevation. So the elevation that we went with, um, it actually just... It was new with elevation. Yeah, it was new. So we had, our, we had an idea on the elevation that was a $20,000 $20, elevation. But it would have been technically like a $10,000 upgrade. Right. How do you figure? Because we had to get an elevation regardless. So it was like from the elevations that we wanted, it would have been an additional 10,000. Mm, mm, um, no, because that one was 20. The other one that you would have wanted was five. Oh, okay, so then a $15,000 upgrade. No, it's a $20,000. <laughs> so it was a $20,000 option, but the one that we actually went with, um, it had just come out right before we went to contract. I said a few months prior, um, and that elevation was only $2,000. And it's the one that you saw in the other video. Very modern, um, you know, sleek lines, low hip roofs, which are the roofs that kind of go back instead of the peaks that you're used to. Um, so we couldn't be happy with that elevation and the design with the colors that we chose. So that was, you know, money well spent. I'm surprised the elevation isn't more, to be honest with you. Uh, so. <laughs> so, right, it probably is now. Um, so keeping with the elevation, one of the things that's important, um, you know, the double door entry. Um, that wasn't standard. Um, the eight foot front door was, but we wanted that double door look. And, you know, to us, it's a, it, it makes the whole front of the house. It's that grand. And here's a little one walking behind us. What's up, Zuri? I'm gonna get my trunk. Okay. <laughs> But put it in that second door did widen, in my opinion, the entryway. And like he said, it just makes it more grand. And so having the double door was actually Akeem's idea, um, but it was almost a no brainer at the same time. And that double door upgrade was actually $2,400. Yeah, so it's, it's, you got it, baby? So you guys haven't met any of our kids yet, but you will very, very soon. But that was Zuri. She's our five-year-old daughter, um, daddy's girl for sure. But um, And I should also mention, um, even though he had already planned on doing the double door, um, when I saw that the double door also brought the extended window, that was also one of the driving points for me for the elevation and for the double doors was that amount of light coming in so oh so yeah so what she's talking about when you expand the entryway door the window above the door um has to expand obviously and the amount of light that that let in was uh definitely um, it's probably one of my favorite things just like especially on, up on the catwalk um just the amount of scenery that you can see so. All right, so the next thing is um, eight foot doors on the first floor. Um, they can't do them on the second floor, but on the first floor, we opted to have eight foot front doors put in everywhere. And that option was $1,500. And to me, height inside of a house just makes the home feel that much more grand. I walked very similar plans. Actually, this is exact, the same exact plan with six foot, the normal doors are six feet, eight inches, and it completely changes everything. Like if 
if nothing else, the eight foot front doors, I'm sorry, the eight foot interior doors are a must. If you can do them, do them. I guarantee you won't regret it. Um, I think it elongates the house. I think anytime your eyes have to go up, it just makes everything bigger. You know, I, I de yeah, definitely. Um, the next thing, so patio. So some home plans come with patios or a standard patio, but we went with um, an extended cover patio that pretty much expands the entire length of the living room. So the patio is um, almost 30 feet long and 10 feet wide. So that option was $12,510. Um, but it's worth it. Texas nights, you know, we spend a lot of time outside and it's a good place to go and hang out. So, you know, money well spent, the bigger the patio, the better, you can't go wrong. Theater option. So I know we, we showed it before, obviously, but the media room that is above us um, has an option to transform into a theater. And as I said before, we're a family of seven. We love to hang out, we love to watch movies, and in our entire home's journey search, we wanted a true, true home theater. We didn't want a media room, we didn't want a room that we could turn into a theater, we wanted a dedicated theater space. And the option was $1,900, um, but with that, you got the pre-wire for Adobe um, 7.2.2 surround sound, as well as uh, dark colored paint. We went with um, Urbane, bronze. Urbane Bronze. So Urbane Bronze is the color. Um, and then your uh, the, the French doors that go into the theater, they're a solid core. So to keep some of that sound dampening in, and then the walls are also sound dampened. So, um, can't wait to get that set up and show everybody, but yeah, that was a $1,900 option. Yeah, that was just basically like a conversion from just a regular room with two windows to no windows, solid room, just so you can have a, a full theater set up. So. And we already had the media room, um, the game room, I'm sorry, so it was almost, you know, something that we definitely want to have in our new build. So the next thing um, on the structural list was our brick. Um, right now, light color brick is uh, super trendy and very popular right now. And the brick that we went with is by Acme Brick and it's called Winterstone. So if it's popular, that means it costs. So the brick was a little under $1,700, um, but it was worth it. You know, we wanted to go with that um, very contrasty house. So we have a very light color brick with black trim um, and we carry that same thing theme throughout the house so we couldn't be happier with um, the way it turns out and especially where our home is positioned um, you know we're surrounded by you know a lot of dark color homes or dark brick homes so when our house sits on that block it stands out so you know again can't be happier with the way it turned out um, with the dark trim as well. And I have people asking all the time what brick and stone we went with. So like he mentioned, we went with the uh, winter stone for brick, and then we have Blanco... Blanco stone chop. For our stone, and then as far as our trim, we went with Black Magic by Sherwin-Williams. Mm -hmm. Next, it would be, so we added a passenger door on the garage. And again, we're in Houston now, but originally we are from uh, Michigan, and... I think every home in Michigan, if it had an attached garage, you had a door that you can go out into the backyard from. Um, it's just convenient when you're doing things in the backyard, you're having parties, barbecues, and you leave the lighter fluid or whatever in the garage, you don't wanna have to always walk through the house. So, you know, adding that option um, for convenience was a must. Yeah, especially with the kids, if they're out there getting wet or different things like that, and it gets muddy or it gets nasty, we can have them come in through the garage versus going through the kitchen. And we have a, a dog too, so you know it. The, all the uses that you can imagine when you have a, a you know a, a dog that loves water and mud. <laughs> we look over Uno just laid out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was eleven hundred dollars to add the passenger door in the garage, um, and then lastly, something that this is my idea though, right? No, it was the you, windows. You knew it wasn't. And I, you definitely you were, I think the one I so want, years ago, the one you. I, I really got into like Pinterest, which is like the pinning app where you, you know, just people know what Pinterest is. Though. Everybody doesn't know what Pinterest if, is. The, if you don't know, if it was like really big back in like 2012. If they're, but if they're not watching, everybody doesn't know what Pinterest is. So just in case Pinterest you don't, is. Pinterest is an app where you can just pin everything. It's almost like 
the Googles of Google. But anyway, so. If you didn't know what Pinterest is, comment below and I, I'll, I'll send you $100 if you tell me you didn't know what Pinterest was. Okay, I didn't know what Pinterest was. I, I could find out a liar. Give me my money. Uh, years ago, I was just like really into Pinterest and um, one of the things that really stood out for me when it was like when we were time, when it was time for us to buy was I really loved the black trim window. So it was almost a no brainer that when we found out that the builder offered it, I was like, oh, absolutely. Um, however, it wasn't the black trim. They actually offered a bronze, rub oil bronze. Is that right? Rub oil bronze? No, no, no. So the, that's, that's like the door handles, but the window frame is just bronze. bronze. It's, yeah. it's, if I told you they were black, you would think they were black until you saw it up against the black, if that makes sense. So it's a really, really dark trim. And even in the other video, people were commenting that they love the black window trim when it's really dark bronze. So the but builder, the builder doesn't offer the windows in black. That's actually what I was getting ready to say. So, you know, the dark bronze, uh, it works perfectly. So we can't, you know, we're, we're good with it. Yeah, absolutely love it. So that was actually a $2,200 upgrade. So all in all, with the entire structural options, we spent $25,285 on structural options. This was before we went to the design center. All right, so the next part we want to touch on is some of the, the electrical options, low voltage things that we added to the home for convenience. And I tell any and everybody when they're building a home, you know, focus on the convenience of how you plan on using your home. So just to touch on uh, what we did, obviously we had the alarm trim um, added, which means they just added outlets or uh, the pre-wiring to run panels um, in different parts of the house, like in our primary bedroom, things of that nature. Um, we added two exterior outlets, I'm sorry, two interior outlets, um, one above the fireplace so we can mount the TV, um, and the second one uh, just on the other side in the primary bedroom so we can mount the TV. So the people that hang the TVs don't have to cut into the drywall, it's already pre-done. Um, and one of the cool things that at least our builder offers is they can run a conduit, which is just an orange tube that they, they cut the hole in the, in the sheetrock and they run the conduit through to where the outlet is. So when you move in, you can run your own HDMI cables and things of that nature through the conduit instead of you know, paying to have someone else do it. So we added that also. Um, let's see, looking at my list here. We did the camera pre-wires. Um, oh, and, security cameras, yeah. Yeah, so that's just, you know, them coming out and pre-wiring it. So when we do get our cameras and different things set up, that we don't have to have them cutting holes into the walls for that either. It's already there. It's just pretty much plug and play. And the cameras are pretty obvious. They're in most places, we have all our uh, entry points covered, plus some secret ones in case anybody wants to get slick. Um, so we have the, the house will be like Fort Knox by the time we're done with it. Let's see, we added... Um, so convenience things again, jam switch. So on our patio, I'm sorry, our pantry, pantry, which you saw in the previous video, also instead of having a light switch that would turn the light on or off, um, we actually have this little button that's in the jam door jam. So when you open the door, the thing pops out and the light comes on. So when you close the door, the light goes off. So it's probably the only thing that. I'm like, maybe we shouldn't have because our kids, they go in the pantry, but they leave the door open. I'm, I'm a little guilty, too. I don't regret it. Um, even when I do see it open, it's just nothing to go close it. Um, it's just a lot easier versus when in the old house, they would leave the pantry door closed and the light would still be on. So you didn't see it unless you happen to walk by oh, and you have true. to look underneath. So I do appreciate it this way because when I'm walking in the kitchen, I'm either closing it or I'm pulling one of the kids to make sure they're closing it. So I actually appreciate that. And the only other minor thing that we did, so um, again, I think we're going to say this a lot. We touched on it in the, in the home walkthrough, but in, we opted to have hanging pendant lights in our primary bedroom instead of uh, lamps. So we actually had to have that pre-wired. So yes, all you baby. All in all, we spent uh, 1880 on all of our electrical or I wouldn't even call it an upgrade. I would more so just call it like addition, additional cost. Yeah, just electrical options to make life easier for how we plan on using our house. Now, I will say going into the electrical, um, a key more so than myself, but 
Uh, we did a lot of research on where we wanted different plugs, what we wanted to do as far as like the pendant lights and different things like that. Like before our design appointment, we knew that these were some things that we definitely wanted to add to the house. Yeah, so I will say that there's differences between builders. Um, I, I will say this, so I work in the industry, I work for new construction sales, so I'm super familiar with not only the builder that I work for, but also other builders, and not every builder is the same. Like, we added zero recess lights in the house, they come with it. Um, there's a lot of things that are standard in this house that you have to pay for as far as upgrades and extras with other builders. There's builders that are going to have very low entry points as far as the house, but you're going to end up adding no, that cost back into the house to get it to where you want it if you looked at a higher cost home and want to make that lower cost home look like that higher cost home. So you just have to do your due diligence as far as what you want to do and the things that you want to have in your home. So the next part is really where you, we, us, everybody spends their money. And that's your interior options and then your interior upgrades. So this is where we... Well, I think you went, you went nuts a little more than I did. <laughs> so before we actually do our breakdown for the interior, so with new construction homes, you are given the option to pretty much, I mean, you get the floor plan, but we pick damn near everything in the house. We were able to pick the knobs, we were able to pick the cabinet styles that we wanted, the hardware we went with it, sink, faucets, the whole nine, flooring, everything. We were able to go in there and pick everything, so we literally designed this whole house. So knowing that we wanted to, this was gonna be our forever home. This is our first home. This is our first time building a home. So we knew that we wanted this to be our forever home. So some things we did go a little bit above and beyond on this, some things we knew we you know, could have waited to do. So with that being said, one of the first things that we picked, both of us agreed on, because we said it in our previous video, was actually the double ovens. Um, again, this is something that we use every time we cook, but we know that we like to host holiday dinners and different things like that, and we both actually cook now. It used to just be a king, but, <laughs> <now. laughs> <laughs> but I cook now too. Um, actually, I did Thanksgiving last year all by myself but that's the story for another day but you know just the convenience of having the double ovens is something that we would always complain about and i don't think any nobody complains about not having a double oven until the fourth quarter yeah that's when it's october november december and really november and december really when we used to do the fourth of july parties too that true used to be, so if, if you cook tough. a lot if you host a lot and you don't cater and you do a lot of the cooking it's when you don't have it it's it's terrible, but when you do have it, well, I don't even know yet because I haven't even. <laughs> oh, but we I think off that was, yeah, we needed two of them yeah, for that. So. But so that was actually, that was an upgrade to add the second um, oven, and that was $1,390. And then um, the cooktop. So the home comes with a standard 30, 32 inch cooktop, but we upgraded to a bigger edge to edge grate 36 inch cooktop. Again, you know, I love to cook. I like to look at myself as the chef of the family, and um, you need that work surface. So that was a no-brainer. Like without hesitation, I was getting the biggest cooktop they offered. So 36-inch GE. All of our appliances are GE, by the way. Um, but the 36-inch cooktop. Um, again, I post pictures or video. Um, that was necessary. That, that was not even a question. Um, small upgrade. The next thing was, huh? The cook, oh, I didn't get the cost. So it was four hundred and ninety dollars to upgrade from the 30, 30 inch. I'm sorry, thirty inch to the thirty six inch cooktop. Um, the stainless steel dishwasher. So we have the same dishwasher that comes standard, but the standard dishwasher has a plastic interior, like the walls, and you know plastic can hold mold, um, just cracks and things of that nature. So to upgrade to the stainless steel interior was. Um, important it was important to me and you know it, it helps with smells all the research that we cleaning. did cleaning all the research said it was uh you know the best way to go so we upgraded to that and that was only 185 bucks to upgrade from the plastic interior to the stainless steel interior but it's all hidden controls that was all the same um so in the kitchen there's a couple things so we have um the pull out trays so in the cabinets when you open up the double doors, normally there's like a half shelf in the back and then you have, you know, there's just a flat surface. 
but we opted to have one of our cabinets um, have the pull-out trays, which you can pull to extend out to you. So, you know, when you get older, like we are, and don't feel like getting down on those knees anymore. It's really, well, what? yeah, I don't know about older, because my knees still work, but. I'm gonna leave that alone. We, um, actually when we, we originally had it like placed somewhere else, but we, after a while we realized that we couldn't place it there because how the cabinet was made. It was supposed to be a lot longer, um, but there was a bar in between the cabinet, so they couldn't put it there, so we actually moved it. So the purpose of why we got it, we ended up having to switch because it became smaller, and so now that's just where we keep like our paper utensils um, and where we keep the kids' items, which has actually become convenient because then we don't have to worry about the climbing up on the counter. But originally why we got it was to hold bigger items. Um, Your kitchen aid stand mixers, things of that nature. Yeah, so. Where you can pull them out, bring them to you instead of keeping them back um, in the cabinet. So that was a $310 upgrade. For two, for two pullouts. Yeah, it, I feel like it would have been worth the money had we actually had it in the bigger cabinets like we wanted, but it's not anything that I regret doing. Just because, like I said, it does help with the kids, and they're able to just grab their stuff. So, so uh, and then the next, so the next upgrade, uh, so standard beneath the cooktop, um, since we have the double ovens in the wall, the cooktop just normally will have a um, a double door that you will open up and you can put stuff in. So we opted to make it a bank of two drawers, and we like it because you can keep all your pots and your pans. Um, especially those deep pots in those drawers right beneath the cooktop. So it's for uh, you know quick access and convenience It's it's one of those things that you don't miss it if you never had it But once you have it you realize how important it is uh, It's relatively inexpensive. So to add the two drawers beneath the cooktop was only two hundred and thirty five dollars um, We also added the trash can drawer um, In the island and the island is pretty big like I said nine feet long um, so we took one of the cabinets out and put in a trash can drawer because I personally hate, you know, the look of a trash can in the kitchen or anywhere in the house for that matter, um, especially where you eat and things of that nature. So the fact that it's hidden is a plus to me. I agree. And a lot of people are just saying like, oh, it's pointless because um, you're constantly having to throw it away. But we actually, we were able to fit a 13 gallon in there and then we were able to fit like a smaller um, office can in there. So just for that, like that backup, you know, trash overflow type situation, we probably dump it maybe, what, two to three times a week. It's not daily like people would think. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have a 33 gallon that we keep outside in the um, garage for the bigger items. So it's, it's convenient because it's hidden, you don't smell it, you don't see it, it's definitely out of the way. And then because we got that, that's how we were able to get the cutting board um, area that we have so that wasn't an upgrade or anything like that but because we got the trash can then we were able to get that extra area too so the next thing is countertops so the kitchen countertops which we have quartz um quartz in the kitchen and then in the butler's area as well the butler pantry and the total to upgrade from granite because granite was a standard to upgrade from granite to quartz um, it was only $2,285. Well, $2, the bathroom countertops, meaning the upgrade in the primary as well as all of the other secondary bedrooms, which we have uh, four and a half bathrooms in total. Um, so the total to upgrade all the countertops to a Marlana, which is a crushed marble material, was $680. So we, we, I think we have white everywhere, but is it Zuri's room? Zuri has a gray, right? Well, all the secondary bedrooms have gray. They all have they gray. They just have okay. like a variation of gray, but they all have gray. We have white in our bathroom and then white in the kitchen. That's right, that's right. So we, we have gray, um, gray cabinets. Right, and then everyone else has white. And they're reversed, so their countertops are gray, but their cabinets are white, that's right. Uh, let's see, what's next? We have, just to kind of run through a couple things really quick here, because again, there's a lot of options, and I, again, I want to make this super in-depth as much as possible but the living room fan we went with the 66 inch wide fan that was 505 bucks or 585 i can't read my own writing but it's one of those two 585 585 let's go with that um the dining room chandelier or dining room light um, that we have over the dining room table that was 215 dollars the uh, chandelier in our entryway 
Um, that was $435. And that's actually 43 inches, which is why we went that one for this video. Uh, let's see, we have coach lights. So our home came standard with three coach lights. So we have two on either side of the door, and then there was one on the garage side closest to the door. So for uniformity and for aesthetics, we wanted to add a fourth one. So we have four coach lights across, two on the entryway, and then two on the garage door. So we had to add one. Um, so the, And then the style of the coach lights that we went with. So all in all, that was $1,270. And then adding the extra coach light was $680. Um, in our primary bathroom, yes, our primary bathroom, the lights above the mirrors that we went with, was 280 bucks and this was this was something missy picked as well all her yeah in the bathroom we just wanted to go simple but i just wanted to because you said the additional the, we did 1270 dollars for the coach lights with the upgrades and the the extra light total the 680 was actually for the under cabinet lighting that we added in the kitchen as well as the butler's pantry Oh, I really can't read my own hand back. <laughs> so yes, I'll, I'll take that back. 1270 was to add that fourth coach light plus the style of the coach lights that we chose. And yes, the under cabinet light in the kitchen in the butler's pantry was exciting. I just said that. Wow. Well, you said I had to say, I had to say it to redeem again. myself. Because I'm going to cut that part out and make it seem like I said it. Okay, so then the front door. So the, we wanted a more modern front door. Um, so it, like I told you in the previous video, it kind of was no brainer to go with the five panels. So that front door upgrade was actually 600, me. it was 600, $600. bucks. So, and that was for both doors total. Um, and they're solid wood mahogany doors. Um, so very, very good material, very great craftsmanship. Um, you know, and we, you know, I was the, the, the type of glass that you use, whether you wanted something where you could see right through or something with a little bit more obscurity. It really didn't change the price, um, but I, I absolutely love the front doors on the house. We were going back and forth between what five and six panel, and actually, I wanted six at first, and then you convinced me to go with actually, five. Actually, we were going back and forth between four and six. That was what we did a poll on four or six. We found five just ran. I think we went to the yeah, design six. center and saw five. I wanted, but then after we saw the six, it was going to six and four for me. Yeah. And, but then but uh, we I'm ended up stumbled up on yeah we stumbled up on the five like it was never even an option we had never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Actually, I take that back. I think I saw it in one of the houses. Uh, next, so floor plug. We added floor plug and the um, living in the room, living room in the office. In the office, obviously living room. So if you have end tables, you have lamps, you can run them on the floor. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let me let me cook. Can I cook? Would you? Can I do me? Can I do me? Sure. So yeah, floor plugging in the office for obvious reasons. Um, flooring, so that's another hefty cost. So that was probably our biggest. Oh, no, I want to talk. Go ahead. Baby. That was like, you cut me off so many times. <laughs> no, no, that no. was our biggest interior cost, to be honest with you. Um, no regrets. So. Every, so with our builder, there's areas of the home that are standard carpet, and then if you want to upgrade the tile over the carpet, there's a cost. Um, the floors that we actually went with, the tile is actually a standard tile. The areas that we put the tile, we did do some upgrades. So we upgraded, so the dining room, the living room, bedroom. our bedroom, office? and the office were all carpet. So those we upgraded from tile, I'm sorry, carpet. from carpet to tile. And then, no, so just the upgrade alone was $7,629. And then the tile pattern that we went with, the um, herringbone pattern that you saw in the previous video, that was $3,196. So just in, if you combine the two and look at the cost to upgrade from carpet to tile, and then also the pattern, we spent a little over $10,000 on our floors. And when you say it like that, it's just like... I have no idea. I, have, <laughs> I, have no I didn't idea. realize it. I didn't realize it was 10 we, grand But floors. we knew, because we when we sat down, we with the original pattern that we went with, I think it was like seven. Um, we knew the flooring was going to be the most costly because we knew we didn't want carpet in those areas previously mentioned. Um, but it's probably one of the most asked about things about the house. 
and probably one of the most proudest uh, decisions that we made because it was actually a last minute decision on both the flooring and the um, pattern, how we laid it, but I have no regrets. I absolutely love it. I mean, it definitely adds that little oomph yeah. to the home that when people walk in, they're not expecting to see. Um, just a little different, so you know, I'm, I'm happy with it too, but I just didn't realize it was, it was over 10 grand in flooring, but hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, front door hardware, just the doors that the, the handle set that we use on the front doors that was a hundred bucks. Um, framed mirrors, um, just to add the that luxury feel to the okay. primary bathroom. Um, total that was five fifty. Um, the kitchen faucet, which is um, we went with the Mac Black um, faucet, that was one hundred and ten bucks. We added a soap dispenser that was eighty five bucks. Um, again, the black sink that we went with, so I believe it's the... It's, it's, it's a Blanco uh, one basin sink, and um, it's black, and that was for me a no-brainer with the design point of the house with aesthetics, so that was $7.95. Then we added, all, so we carried the, the black... Um, hardware. Not hardware, the, yeah, I guess you would aesthetic. say the sink, the sink hardware. Uh, the faucets and things of that nature. So we have that in the kitchen and we have it in our bedroom. So we added, so the faucets and things of that nature in the primary bathroom, that was 1,280 bucks. Um, to take the shower tile all the way up to the top of the, to the ceiling, um, that was 455 bucks. I think it makes a big difference um, aesthetically when you're looking, um, you know, when you're in the shower or when you're in the bathroom, I've seen it both ways, and anytime you take that towel all the way to the top, it, it really takes the look to the next level. Okay. Um, let's see, our backsplash. So in the kitchen, our backsplash, which also covers the butler's pantry, that was 796 bucks. Um, in our sh in the going back to the bathroom, in the primary shower, we have a bench seat, that was 250 bucks. And then we have the uh, the niche or niche, however you want to pronounce it, that's cut out in the shower for our soaps and things. That was two hundred and fifty dollars as well. Getting down to the end here, the interior door hardware. Again, our builder does not offer the door handles in black, so we went with the darkest option they have, which was well, this is the, the, the raw bronze, yeah. and my wife she hates it. I I. Even though she couldn't tell that it was rub bronze until I told her and she looked, got it up close to black and realized it wasn't. I hate it because black is also my favorite color and the ones I wanted to go with were square. So originally we were just gonna take the um, doorknobs that came with the house, the free ones. However, when we sat down, we, we walked through and we priced like, or we counted how many doors we'd have to uh, add hardware to. It was just like the convenience of just going with the rubbed oil bronze was just way easier than having to get the matte black ones and then putting them on. So now that I'm in the house and we've been here for two months now, I don't. You, you can't see tell them. the difference. I don't see them. I don't, it, just like you don't see the windows. You can't tell the difference. Anybody comes over the house and you pull them, they'll say they have black handles. So I'm happy with it. Yeah, I have no regrets. Um, we also add a surround that was, sign. What? $10,050. Oh, we didn't say the yes. $10,000. Oh, my God. 1, that was $1,000. That was $1,050. Um, did I write that right? Yeah, I did write that right. Um, surround sound. So, we added pre-wired, and again, this is redundant if you watch the other video, but we have a stereo surround sound in four locations. So, we have the patio, the kitchen living room area, the office, as well as the game room. So, we can have a distributed audio throughout the house. But that was uh, 1400 bucks for the pre-wire only. Um, I plan on putting in my own speakers and my own amps and things of that nature. I'm not quite an audiophile, but I'm very particular on how my music sounds and the quality and things of that nature. So I just have them on the pre-wire, which saves me a lot of money on the back end. But um, yeah, 1400 bucks for that. So. Yo, so this part. <laughs> So as we yeah. talked about in the previous video, we the fireplace was actually originally like on in the corner and we moved it to the middle. My thought process was, and it, once we give you the price, you're like, oh, that's a lot. But once I break it down, you're they like, may oh, not. okay, it, it makes they sense. They may not think it's a lot. So I have wanted this um, cream stone color, uh, what, what was that? Like the, um, it was a tile, like stone tile? Um, make any sense. No, yeah, it was tile. It looks like stone, but it okay. was actually a tile, and it was like a level 
seven or that they had was. yeah that they had at the design center and so i told the came i was like we gotta go with that so we knew the linear what was the we knew that was going to be a 1500 dollars upgrade we both you know were okay with that she's talking about going from the traditional square fireplace box to the um, linear linear one that we the have. 42 inch linear that we talked about in a previous video and so um yeah, they hit us with the whammy. It was like almost ten thousand dollars. Just for the tile. Just for the tile. <laughs> it broke my heart. So we actually this actually cost us a, a third design center appointment. Um, but we were three days into framing and we had to shoot to the design center because we had made a decision to move the fireplace. Moving the fireplace did not cost an additional amount of money, but going to the design center to pick out a tile did. It did. No, relocating the fireplace was nine hundred. Yeah, it was nine hundred dollars to relocate the fireplace from the corner, which where it comes standard. Because the fire a fireplace comes standard with this home, but it's a traditional like cast on in the corner, like you're really of the newer homes, the you know the standard fireplace. So to relocate it to the center of the living room was nine hundred dollars. Then to upgrade from the square box to the linear rectangular box was fifteen hundred dollars, and then the cost because you moved it, now you take the tile all the way up to the two stories, and again, these are 19 foot ceilings. So the cost to do the tile and the black tile on the fireplace behind me, that was all me. That was my call. That was $2,700 to tile it all the way up to the ceiling. So with everything from the structural, the electrical, and all the interior, we spent a grand total of $60,611, blowing past our budget by $20,000. Um, 5,000 of the 20,000 was me, I think the other 15 was you. Are you serious? I think so. I have no idea. No, but you did a good job. I like, know, was, I yeah. look, killed it. So, um, I'm happy, I'm glad you did, so. But yeah, all in all, that's our, that's our story. That's how much we spent in options. So I hope this video helps. Let us know in the comments below if you like this type of content, if you like this longer form content. Um, tell us what was your favorite part in the video. Leave that in the, uh, I'm sorry, in the comments below. And until our next video, 